Uh, you, ma- you mentioned the major cause of death in PNH is thrombotic uh, episodes, particularly in bad places like cavernous sinus in the brain and the um, uh, Bud Chiari syndrome, portal system occlusions. Uh, do we know anything about what's happened to those manifestations with the use of this drug? Well, the, the uh, studies that were originally set up were not set up to study uh, thrombosis, despite my suggestions that they should. Yes. But uh, in, in looking at the patients that, that received the drug and comparing the, 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 their the instance of thrombosis during the time they were receiving the drug, uh, Dr. Hellman in, in England has gone back and looked at the previous equal time when they were not on the drug. And he had very careful records on almost all the patients, are very well studied. And what they found is that there is a remarkable, and I really mean remarkable, reduction in the uh, rate of thrombosis. Uh, the patient adjusted uh, rate uh, before uh, uh, the drug was used was 39 events per patient, uh, per uh, 100 patient years. And after it was two. Wow. So we, I think that that, uh, that there is, is although uh, it was not tested directly, there is no question that it's, it's that it is a, it has an effect. And I think this is likely to be the uh, major effect, uh, beneficial effect as far as longevity is concerned. One of the concerns that uh, many of us had when we first. Uh, saw this drug and, and saw some of the initial benefits was the concern that after all the complement system is there for our benefit, uh, it is a major a mechanism of activating inflammatory responses to bad things like microbes and so on. Has the concern uh, been borne out that there might be an increased infection propensity in, in patients so treated? So well, far, well, we have we have some some data from patients who congenitally lack C five and six and seven, and the only infections that they have are, are have been recorded are Neisserial infections, uh, nice, particularly Neisseria meningitis, but also Neisseria gonorrhea, uh, and therefore uh, it is requisite that all patients receiving the drug, the the Solaris, the Thuzumab, uh, are vaccinated against Neisseria. Uh, in the 193 patients over as long as five years, most of them three or four years, uh, there have been three, three cases of Neisseria infection. One actually occurred uh, during previous studies of Inclusimab, uh, and two have occurred uh, in, uh, in the study patients. Uh, one was a patient had the Neisseria species that did not, was not covered by the vaccine, and the other uh, had, was inadequately covered apparently because it didn't get it. All patients are are asked or carry a card, uh, and are told that at the first sign of major fever to see a doctor and go to the emergency room at once. It's much like patients who have been spolectomized need to be alerted to the fact that they, and if, if once they, that happens and the, the the appropriate steps are taken, there have been no fatalities at all. Or, I mentioned in introducing the, the subject that uh, Gleevec was specifically. Uh, designed to um, uh, inhibit the mutant tyrosine kinase that's involved with chronic myelogenous leukemia and as a peculiar <coughs> ripple not expected at the time. It was uh, later demonstrated that the drug was highly efficacious against another uh, tyrosine kinase involving gastric stromal uh, tumors. It strikes me that the inhibitor of C5 uh, worked out for PNH might well have uh, even greater uh, utility in another subject that we're going to be talking about in this series uh, of patients who develop acute lung injury uh, associated with transfusion, we call that trality, uh, which is an antibody-mediated, complement-activating uh, situation, uh, as is um, are most of the cases of uh, the adult respiratory distress syndrome in which we and others have demonstrated that, in fact, C5A, the substance you've talked about, uh, is involved in causing granulocyte margination uh, and activation uh, in the uh, small capillaries of the lungs, leading to pulmonary leak and, and major cause of fatality in our intensive care units. Uh, it will be intriguing 
to uh, see whether uh, this drug might be uh, utilized both for the treatment of something like ARDS and or its prevention, and the same thing might be said for patients at high risk of developing transfusion-related uh, pulmonary edema, and we'll probably wait to uh, uh, see whether that comes to fruition. One last uh, thought well, I have. May come sure, in. please. Yeah. Yeah. And the, that is, the drug is apparently immediately effective. Well, that would be and, necessary. And it, uh, the, in the doses that are given. As it is now prescribed, it requires going through getting the meningococcal uh, vaccination and so on. But I think that in the future, that as more ways are more uh, instances in which it is effective, uh, it is going to, it'll be. Uh, alterations will be made so that it will be able to be given on a, an acute basis. I think there are some other hematologic diseases. I think uh, that it may very well respond to uh, inhibition of this uh, complex. Unfortunately, many of the hematologic, uh, medi immune mediated hematologic uh, conditions involve steps before C5 and not effective, will not be effective in, in those conditions. But, but uh, for instance, I think the antiphospholipid syndrome uh, which is again activated activation of platelets just as it is in PNH by complement uh, may play a role in the thrombosis in those cases. And I think that, that it, it remains to be seen exactly what the total use of the right. drug will be. The last uh, comment, and we really thank you for your input. Uh, this, not, this knowledge, which is relatively recent, that uh, hemoglobin, uh, soluble hemoglobin, is a sump for nitric oxide and therefore softeal spasms and so on might well be explained in, in PNH. Um, we've learned this uh, mainly from people interested in sickle disease who have demonstrated that the pulmonary hypertension of sickle disease may well be related in some way to uh, release hemoglobin and nitric oxide uh, uh, scavenging of, by that hemoglobin. Has anyone thought about using drugs like Viagra, which of course are nitric oxide uh, generators, uh, in PNH to diminish the uh, situations like uh, esophageal spasm, for instance. What you haven't told us, and I, I, I know you've been concerned about this, is the drug we're talking about is enormously expensive. Well, luckily, PNH is not a, a, a public health a problem uh, in, in terms of its prevalence, uh, but if we could treat things like esophageal spasm and abdominal pain and erectile dysfunction, if uh, PNH was something as simple as uh, Viagra, it would uh, it would be a boom. Mm -hmm. uh, has that been thought of? Uh, oh yes. No, we we uh, in the doses of uh, uh, first before we had Viagra, we were using nitrates without understanding why exactly. Uh, just because sure. of the esophageal spasm, sure. Sure, for the esophageal spasm, and very large doses of nitrates will do it, but they're very short lasting and has no have their own effects. In use of Viagra for the uh, for the erectile dysfunction, it requires large doses, mm -hmm. and uh, patients are often unwilling to take it because of some of the side effects that they get from such large from such large doses. The uh, PNH uh, pulmonary hypertension has been described in PNH, uh, but it is not a major clinical problem. I don't recall a single patient that I saw that had had that, and I think that the so, uh, and I think that the uh, pulmonary hypertension sickle cell disease is very complex and has something, some probably has at least uh, uh, some part to do with trying to get sickle blood into a, into the lungs and get it unsickled in time to, to flow smoothly. But the, uh, but it, uh, uh, it has not, it has not been, and, and the effect of, uh, of uh, Solaris on any, any, pulmonary hypertension that might be there has not been looked at. Wendell Ross, thank you so much, uh, not only for, for this, but for joining uh, the editorial board as head of our Red Cell section of Hemonc Today. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video from Hemonc Today. Keep up with all our new videos by visiting the Hemonc Today YouTube channel or go to our website at hemonctoday.com.